So anyway, let's come up. Let's come up with a conclusion and wrap this thing up in pastry. <laughs> oh, I forgot to record the audio. Ha <laughs> ha! This is the last Mac I bought. I bought it mainly for exposing myself inappropriately in train station toilets, but that's a whole other video. In terms of Apple Mac, I have a long history. Here's a little backstory for you. I bought my first PC in the mid 1990s, a compact Presario from Dixon's here in the UK. I bought it mainly because other people were buying them and some were realizing they could be used for recording audio. I, in my own home studio, as well as my peers in most commercial studios in and around London, were still recording to tape, whether it was analog tape or the newfangled ADAT or Tascam DA88 digital formats. And Whilst the editing potential of using a computer for recording seemed very appealing indeed, a lot of us couldn't get our heads around the fact that there was, at the time, little in the way of removable media other than the three and a half inch floppy disks and you couldn't record an album to one of those. So where did it go when you'd finished it? Hard drives were measured in the low megabytes at best and we were used to taking the tape off the machine when we'd finished the project, storing it and loading up a fresh one for the next session. So the computer spent most of its time allowing me to discuss discover the joys of the early internet, and that's where the train station toilets originated. Skip forward to 1999 and the approach of the new millennium. Prince had been harping on about some kind of party for a while, and there was concern over the millennium bug, a theory that computers would have their date reset to the year zero on the dawn of midnight, would think they existed at the time three wise men were embarking on an epic journey with nothing more than a star as their GPS, and therefore didn't exist. They'd all explode because of the stress, and the world would grind to a halt computerless. Well, that didn't happen. But what did happen in the late 90s was that more and more people were starting to use computers to record audio. MIDI had been around for 18 years. We'd all gotten used to Steinberg's Pro 24 sequencer software on the Atari ST, so capturing audio as well as the MIDI data seemed the next logical step. So I bought an audio interface for my PC and set about trying to get it to work. After days of driver installs, deletions and reinstalls, I was having no luck. And I'm one of those right side of the brain people that are better at the creative than we are at the technical. And once the technical starts to get in the way of the creative rather than facilitate it, our brain's going to shut down, we develop a foul mood and it's game over. So after days of struggle with no luck, my patience was pushed overboard and I clearly remember shouting, Windows 98 out of the window 99! <laughs> whilst throwing the entire PC, screen and all out of a fourth floor window. After first checking, there were no innocent passers-by walking below, of course. Actually, I'm not sure I did check. My flatmate at the time came home from work. I asked him how his day went. We had a chat about it. He put the kettle on and it was around 10 minutes before he'd plucked up the courage to ask, is there any particular reason why your computer is in several hundred places all over the pavement? I explained my day and whilst clearing up the mess, he suggested I went and bought a Mac. So I drive the half an hour or so out of London to John Lewis in Watford and picked up a shiny new Apple iMac G3. I got home, set it up in minutes, and on plugging my interface in it for the very first time, it told me I'd done so and asked me if I'd like to use it. And that was it. I was sold. Steve Jobs had worked his magic on me. I had become an Apple fanboy. Over the next two decades, my history with Apple computers consisted of many iMacs in various guises. This eMac from around 2004. Oh my God! Ah! Jesus! That's heavy. But look at it. Look at the stand on that. Beautiful piece of kit. And in 2005, I bought the best computer I've ever owned. The Power Mac G5. This machine is a superb piece of product design, engineering and art. Not only is it beautiful to look at to this day, especially compared with most over shouty look at me gaming PCs, but listen to this.
the fan speed up when you disrupt the airflow. And you can take bits out, put better bits in, and this is how you bought Logic back in 2005. This cost more than the new Mac Mini. This was replaced with an Intel machine of a similar design in around 2009 alongside another iMac and our current Studio Mac, a 2014 Mac Mini, a machine that has provided sterling service for us for the past six years. But my certified Apple fanboy status got dented a few years back when Apple seemed to neglect their core creative customer base in favor of making everything lighter and thinner, although lighter is not a bad thing, and seeing just how many essential sockets they could remove, gluing their products together, making hardware upgrades pretty much impossible. And us audio guys were using PCIe interfaces as they were stable and gave us extremely high channel counts, both into and out of the DAW. And Apple then ditched those with the trash can Mac in favor of Thunderbolt, getting more than eight channels into and out of a Mac when we moved here in 2016 without having to resort back to two decades of previous ADAC technology was harder than you might think. But interface manufacturers adapted and now there are many interfaces available that can be daisy chained via Thunderbolt to give you as many ins and outs as you'd practically need, as well as AVB, Dante and MADI options over Ethernet. So with the new M1 Apple Silicon just released, are Apple once again trying to claw back us creatives, people who don't want technology getting in the way of productivity. People like me. Let's hope so, because I'm still of the opinion that Mac is better for music and video, unless you have a technical brain like James and relish the challenge that PCs often present. The red hard drive, for example, off our camera, plug that into James's editing PC and you have to do a little dance to get it to mount. Sometimes it will, more often than not it won't, but plug it into the Mac and it pops up on the desktop in under a second. Now, I understand that Windows has to cover a lot of bases. It has to work on a vast array of machines using a vast array of components from a vast array of different manufacturers and that Apple can optimize their software for their own hardware, even more so now that they're making their own processing. And that excites me. I'm excited by this, the new, Mac Mini. So time for me to shut up and get on with the video. And I can see James smirking behind the camera because he's vowed not to help me at all with anything technical in this video. And he thinks that I think that I can just plug our Thunderbolt interface into this and it'll just work. But I'm already one step ahead and no, it's a different version of Thunderbolt cable and it won't fit. Ha ha. And I have absolutely no idea what the hell I'm going to do about that. <laughs> Hello, so I'm over here now at the desk. Now, I've set up a logic project with a lot of stuff going on and got it just on the verge of, once we've also got QuickTime doing a screen recording, just on the verge of falling on its ass. Uh, we've got eight channels with virtual MIDI instruments on them, so Logic's having to process the instruments in real time. We've got 32 channels of audio as you can see on here. Now these are just like Apple loops and stuff that I've dragged in. I've, I haven't used any non-native Logic plugins because I basically want to be able to replicate this project exactly on the new Mac Mini and see how much further we can take it before that gets on the verge of falling on its ass. So uh, yeah, eight virtual instruments. We've got 32 channels of audio there. And if we open the mixer, you can see we've got basically a lot of plugins that are, are Logic's kind of standard ones. Uh, and we've got 96 instances of Space Designer, which is insane. I remember back on the G5, two instances of Space Designer and that was it, you'd had it. So uh, in just that five year period, computing power moved on an enormous amount. So just to clarify, this is the old Mac Mini. This is the 2014 Mac Mini running OS X, I don't know what. 10.12. 10.12 and uh, Logic version 10.4. So old stuff, basically. I think the operating system is still in the cats category, maybe. Or is it mountains? mountains. No, it's mountains. Uh, whereas now, of course, we're on Smurfs, big Smurf. And soon we'll have Papa Smurf, which will be the next. Anyway, I'll get on with this. So if we play the audio, we can see that it's playing. Everything's playing in real time, which is good. This is what it sounds like. Wait for this. This is great. And if we click on our CPU monitor, 
we can see that we've maxed out three cores completely. The fourth one is on the verge of death. Uh, disks barely ticking over. We've got a, a, a solid state drive in this Mac Mini, as has the new one. So you'd expect the disk performance to be fairly good. Um, but processor wise, it's pretty much falling on its ass. If we added one more space designer, see how we go. Still going, let's add another one. Oh, it's getting a bit laggy now. No, we've, that's it, we're dead. So we, we, there we go. We literally were on the verge of chaos. Forgot to mention, we've also got a drummer track in here as well. Uh, Duncan is playing virtual drums for us and he's taking up uh, some channels. Got this little barely scroll now. He's taking up 25 channels with his drums. So that's good. Uh, let's get rid of him. So let's just check the settings so as we can make sure that the settings are the same on both machines. Uh, I've used my brain horsepower and realized that um, this will probably work on the new machine. The Focusrite Clarit 8 Pre X, which we've got, won't because it's got the wrong sort of Thunderbolt cable on it. So we're using the SSL2 interface for this because it's USB C, so it will work on our existing Mac Mini as well as the new one. Let's just have a look in the settings, see what's going on. So, audio, uh, you can see we've got SSL2 and we've got an in out buffer size of 128 samples, which is quite low, but you know, that's something you'd use if you were recording and adding MIDI instruments and playing along yourself, then that's the kind of the kind of setting you'd want. All that remains to do now is bounce it out and see how long it takes to bounce. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ah, done. So that did it in one minute, three seconds. So pretty much real time. So that's you know what it would have taken us back in the days of tape when everything had to be bounced in real time. So I've managed to load um, and install Logic uh, Prox successfully. So that's good. Uh, and I didn't have a nervous breakdown. No one died and nothing got thrown out a window, which is always good. That's why I built this studio with no windows, so as I couldn't throw computers out of it, basically. Okay, let's play it. Such a banging tune. Performance meter. So we're not even at 50% on this. So this would lead me to believe that this machine is roughly twice as powerful as the old Mac Mini. It's playing everything with not, there's no glitching, nothing's going doo-doos, no activity on the drive like we didn't really have on the other one. So what I'm gonna do now is double everything. <laughs> Just come back in a little while. Oh, that's really annoying. There should be a double project button. <laughs> it's painful. Why is it painful watching an old man try and uh, operate a, commu a commuter? A computer. We have doubled our project. So we now have two instances of Duncan playing the drums for us. 16 virtual instruments, soft synths, MIDI. We've got 64 channels of audio. <laughs> We've got 188 instances of space designer which is bonkers now please don't judge me i know we're gonna get some comments on this video saying oh, you don't need to run 188 instances of space designer you can just run one and use a bus i know that that's not what this video is about this video is about trying to make the computer fall over so that's why we've got 188 instances of space designer let's play it and see if all the power goes off struggling it just plays it look at that it just plays it so can you do an approximate calculation being a millennial type person on roughly how many plugins we've got playing in real time at the moment so we've got 384 plugins running live 128 sample buffer size and it's not even struggling. Look at it. Let's load this up. The disc's doing nothing. That's barely gone up. 
Wow. Huh. Right, this is completely opposite to what we were getting yesterday with video. This is impressive, and this machine's got eight gigs of RAM. I mean, it's a base model Mac Mini. I bet if you had a previous, not the current generation, if you had a previous generation Mac Pro, the trash can one, I doubt you'd be able to do this on that. Right. Let's double it again. Woo! We have got, you can't even zoom out. That's how much we've got. So we've added another third. So we've, we've, we've now got three times what we had originally. So we've got three Duncans, if that's even possible, playing drums for us. 24 virtual instruments, samples, MIDI, various real-time software instruments, 96 audio channels running, which means we have how many plugins? Maths has been calculated and we are now running 960 plugins <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> on a 195 channel logic project. I'm slightly reluctant to press the space bar in case, I don't know, a pigeon flies in and shits on my chin or something like that. But <laughs> <laughs> like that's the thing but let's give it a go wow oh my god it's not just playing is it it's playing like yeah whatever on 128 samples it's playing whilst making a cup of tea are we still on 128 samples 128 samples 195 channels and these aren't just like channels with nothing going on 950 plugins of which 288 of those are instances of space designer so we've got 950 plugins so what we'll do now is we'll load 20 more instances of space designer and see what happens so this is another 20 instances of Space Designer, so 970 plugins. It's play and all the graphics are there, aren't they? It's that everything's working. You can see everything. It's not, it hasn't frozen the graphics so as it can deal with the audio. It's still there. Right, let's see if we can carry on while it's playing. 990 plugins. 1,010 plugins. <laughs> So 1,010 plugins, can we make 1,030? Yep. Okay. Hey. So, oh, that's no good. Send that back. So it's well over three times more powerful than the old Mac Mini. So I think what we should do is download Final Cut Pro for you video guys, and we will do a deep dive into that tomorrow. So we you know Resolve didn't work too well for us. Um, let's see how Final Cut Pro performs and James also might have some answers as to why people have been getting stunning video performance from this computer as well but we'll leave that to him tomorrow so anyway let's come up let's come up with a conclusion and wrap this thing up in pastry <laughs> oh, I forgot to record the audio <laughs> so uh, wow in our excitement, we forgot to bounce the original project out. So here we go, the new Mac Mini completes the task in... 15.84 seconds. That's four times faster than the 2014 model. So yesterday we were supremely disappointed with the performance of this new Mac Mini. Check out that video if you haven't already. And it was well on its way to having a returns note stuck on the box. But today is a completely different story. The performance of this running Logic Pro has been nothing short of astounding. And don't forget, of course, that this is the very base model, the very very base model the worst m1 mac mini ever made and that will ever be made with only eight gigabytes of ram so the 699 pound question is would i move over to this from our old faithful 2014 model hmm no at least not yet i've had a raft of emails from plugin developers over the last week saying don't update to 
massive smurf or whatever it's called as stuff won't work and this is commonplace with a hardware shift such as this we've seen it before many times over the years it's change it's progress and i earn my living mastering music and i need a flawless system that works every day i can't take a gamble on a third party plugin not working um, but of course given time for things to settle down then yes I would, it's incredible. So should you make the change? Well, again, if you're a professional, I'd say probably not yet, particularly if you use third-party plugins, I'd suggest you hang on at least a month or two. And if you're a film composer or someone who needs to run a lot of sample instruments, sample libraries, etc., you'd certainly want to wait for the model with more than eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, so I'd say hang on if you're a pro. If you're just starting out and you're looking at a new computer to start making music with and want to try Logic Pro to see how you get on with it, then I'd say yes, absolutely. This, alongside something like the SSL interface, can be had for under a grand, and that's insane. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that now is absolutely the best time to be making music, and with technology that's this powerful to aid that at this price point, I think things can only get better as the technology advances and I for one can't wait to see how these machines develop over the coming months. Yesterday, as we said, this Mac Mini's future involved slapping a returns label on it. Um, today, both myself and James are absolutely blown away with its performance. So we're not done yet. Stay tuned. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And over the next few days, we'll be trying this out back in video land again with Final Cut Pro to see how the performance of that Apple's own software compares with DaVinci Resolve. Exciting. I'm excited. Excited. Are you excited? I am. Excellent. Hope you're excited. Uh, we'll see you then. Now I just sit here awkwardly holding my thumbs up, trying to smile and not shit my pants. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I've shat my pants. I've shat my pants. <laughs> my pants have become shat. I've shat in my pants. <laughs> I've shat my pants. <laughs> shit in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> my pants, I've shat my pants, I've shat my pants, there's a load of runny, oh shit in my pants, it's running down my leg, I can feel it in my sock, now it's in my shoe, <laughs> I've shat my f***ing pants. <laughs> I, I think so. Hmm.